Um, so Thank hi you. everyone. And um, so we're gonna be speaking to everybody here and also we're speaking to our folks on Zoom. And folks on Zoom, Amy is monitoring the comments. So if you need to add anything in, please put it in there. She'll add it into the space. So you are a part of the group. And just so you know, we're not gonna put the camera on everyone that's in the room um, as requested. And one of the things that I just really wanna invite everyone to do is as you're thinking about, we go through today, look for the gold nuggets, look for the things that for you right now feel important. There's a lot of information we're gonna go through. Uh, and it's probably for some people, it could be overwhelming for some of you who've been doing this stuff for a while, you might be like, okay, I kind of know most of that, but here's the gold nugget I got. We're all at different stages, right? So you'll see me as we go through this. I might even refer to, okay, if you're just getting started out, this is what this might look like. But if you're more advanced, this is what this piece could look like as well. Um, so welcome to the training. Um, and Amy, I'm going to just have you keep, I'm used to clicking my own slide. So Ooh. go ahead and get us to the um, social strategy um, slide. And we might have just a slight delay every once in a while just because of the Zoom feature. Um, so if you want to go to the next slide. Um, when you think about marketing, there are so many different components to it. And there's so much more than social marketing, right? And I would actually offer up social marketing can look like a lot more than social media platforms because we're talking about marketing all the time. So one of the things that we're going to try to do is work on breaking some of this down into little chunks so that maybe it's a little more understandable. And also, um, thank you, that we're also able to um, maybe find the pieces that are going to be something you can hone in on right now and start making an impact faster. Okay, next slide. Okay. Um, so raise your hand if you are like feeling like I think about marketing and I am just like, oh my gosh, it is, yeah, like so overwhelming. Where do I start? There's too much. Should I be on this platform? This one? Okay, this is like, I just want to normalize that for you right now. Almost every single person will raise their hand. Um, even individuals who do this for a living will raise their hand because there's constantly something new that's coming up or there's a new strategy that you need to do within this or the algorithm changes. Like this can be a super overwhelming thing. So we're gonna try to look at some different ways that we can continue breaking it down. On the next slide, please. Okay. So here's what we're gonna to cover today. Um, we are going to talk about um, what are the goals and key themes around your social media strategy? What does that look like? We're going to talk a little bit about audience and why audience is important to the social media strategy and to the goals, because we'll, as we get into it, I'll explain why that becomes so important. We're going to talk a little bit about the method. What is the method that you're going to use to reach that, uh, to obtain the goal, but also to reach that audience? And then we're going to talk about the scheduling component of it. This is a really big deal for most people. You'll hear me talk about the EKG machine in just a minute. And then also um, what consistency looks like. How do we stay consistent with this? Um, I think that's one of the biggest challenges for most people when they put together their social strategy is like, it's sort of like the all or none game. I'm either putting out all of these things or I'm doing absolutely nothing. Yeah, this is this sounding familiar? Uh, so folks on Zoom, we're getting a lot of head nods here in the room, um, just so you know. Okay, um, let's go to our next slide. So the first thing that we want to... So get going to the next one. Yeah, no, go to the next one. It's, it's good. Go. So here's what we want to talk about. By the way, um, did the people who are online get a copy of these handouts? They did. Okay, this excellent. Yep. So get out your handouts, take notes. And if you're like me, I actually also have a little board with sticky notes. If you want to do that, that's fine too if you're at home. So we want to talk about what is the goal as it relates to your social strategy in general, because what the goal is, is going to actually determine the type of posts you're going to do or the type of marketing you're going to be doing. So um, especially if you're looking at specific campaigns, this is really going to tie in. But am I looking for an immediate sales purchase? Is there a sale happening? Is there something around that? How does that tie into my social strategy? Am I looking at more just creating awareness? Am I opening a new store? How much awareness do I need to create around that? Am I looking for engagement? So engagement can be those things like people vote on a color choice, or do you prefer a petty, a mani, a wax, or all of the above, right? Or maybe if you're getting, uh, digging into that a little more, it's like, so if you're getting waxed, are you a <laughs> Brazilian bikini, right? Like all, okay, so you can actually even do that to get more engagement. And that's where you see the 
do you want an A, B, C, D vote? You know, do you know the ones I'm talking about? It gets you engaged. Mm -hmm. I, but one little, I just have a little asterisk on this engagement thing. So sometimes you'll see people saying, um, we're coming out with a new coffee, whatever. What would you like to see us create at the coffee shop? Okay, you're already asking people to really have to think about it even more. Like, oh yeah, what would I create? Blah, blah, blah. Whereas if you say we're creating a new fall coffee, would you prefer gingerbread pump? Okay, right. Like you get even more specific because it makes it easier for the audience. So they can either, you know, do the A, B, C, D or whatever. Um, so that's, so engagement can look like a lot of different things of how you can engage your audience. Edifying collaborations and community partnerships. This is really big. And I think it is very underused, undervalued, under all the unders. <laughs> Um, the reason I say that is when you collaborate with other businesses or organizations, first of all, your, your reach is just bigger, right? You're actually getting their audience and your audience. So you're going to draw in more customers for yourself, right? But what it also does on a bigger scale than that is you're really edifying being a part of community, supporting other entrepreneurs. Like this is not just, oh, I'm here and I'm here for myself alone, Raise your hand if you've ever been around entrepreneurs who you know they are only there for themselves and they don't really care, right? It was fascinating during the pandemic to see business responses around this. We saw some entrepreneurs just completely coming together. Let's support each other. We're going to get through this together. And then there were others that were like, I'm only going to care about myself. I'm going to get through this. And they just got in this like, really? And you know what's fascinating? They did make it through. But guess what's happened now to some of their businesses? People don't forget how you are, right? Have you seen those quotes where like people say they won't necessarily remember certain specifics, but the how you treated them, this flamingo over here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> more to come on Wendy and her flamingos if we have a chance to bring that in. Um, so it's really, really important. And by the way, it's a great post. A picture with you with somebody or, hey, we did this together. People love that kind of stuff. They just, I, I truly believe at the core, even though we'll read all the icky stuff on the news or whatever, at the core, we really want to feel good. And I think we are in a place in society timing right now. People really need the feel goods. They need to have hope again. And we as entrepreneurs can actually be a part of bringing that hope by the way that we are posting, the way we are being with other entrepreneurs. So it can start with each of us. I think it's just really important. Um, that I call these the validation ones. It sort of validates your business. So this can be testimonies. It can be feedback. Um, I love, so this is a little idea. Um, by the way, I might be drinking a lot of water. I have this weird, funky thing with my ear going on. So if, and it, do I sound funny? Or no, you just, do not. Okay, sound, it sounds funny sound in great. my head. It's because my ear, okay. Um, so if you see me drinking a lot, I'm fine. Um, hopefully I don't have to zing out to the restroom too. Um, I'll just, grace, grace, grace. That's all I'm asking for. Um, so these testimony things. So testimonies can look like a lot of different things. So you know how people will come into you and they'll say things like, oh my gosh, I just love this, blah, 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 blah. And you're thinking, I need that testimony, right? Mm -hmm. But so many times we don't do anything with it. We're like, we feel good about it, but we don't do anything with it. Um, so one thing I love it when somebody, I'm starting to get better about this because it's kind of hard to ask for these things sometimes, isn't it? Like, we're like, oh, I don't want to like, can I please have you write that down or do, but I'm getting better about it because if they feel that strongly about you, they they want to do that for you. And so one way is they can write it down. Um, I had one recently, um, I was traveling on a speaking tour and I actually had a gal, she's like, oh my gosh, I just love your weekly blog, blah, 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 blah. Can I take a picture with you? I'm like, oh my gosh, absolutely. So we take this picture. So now what do I have? A post that's not just a testimonial, like I've got a fan out here for the Joy B blog, right? And then it was just something I could put out. It was awesome, right? So look for those moments or those opportunities, um, depending on what your industry or what your business is, that could look different, right? It, it could look different for all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, but another great one that I'm just really starting to wrap around is this idea that somebody wants to do a testimonial, get them on a video. So it's like, you know, Wendy says to me, oh my gosh, Deb, I just love this bubble. I said, Wendy, would you be willing to just do a quick little less than 30 second blurb on what was it that you loved about the presentation or how did it impact your life? Okay, what was it about that experience that impacted you, right? And of course, if she had a great experience and she shared that with me, she's probably willing to be, if she's willing to be on camera. Not everybody likes to be filmed, I'm just saying. But <laughs> there are those people. Those are the people that you say, hey, would you be willing to? Um, or maybe if it's previous people that you've worked with in the past, they might be uh, willing to do that as well. So is this making sense on these validations? You want people to know and validate what it is that you do. 
Um, and then there's the kind of, if you have a goal for list building, do people know what I mean when I say list building? List building can be building up email addresses. It can be building cell phone numbers. And so what you'll see oftentimes, and this should be a part of your social strategy, if you need, if, I mean, okay, I just have to do one more. Okay, I, this is what happens, right? <laughs> I have to say something about this. So do you all remember about, I think it was like a year ago now, maybe it, the timing, you know, it's just time flies by, but it was when the Facebook went down, the social media went oh, down. Does anybody yes. remember this? Mm -hmm. And people were freaking out, <laughs> except for the people who had their customers' email addresses yeah. and cell mm -hmm. phone numbers, right. because they had a way to keep communicating and a way to keep marketing to them. Those email lists are golden. So we've seen a weird trajectory on the emailing. So it kind of had its, it had sort of a life, and then people are like, oh, email the socials where it's at. But email is making a comeback. And even more than that is if you can text people right to their phone, right? Because you can get right mm -hmm. to them. Make sure you have permission, of course. Um, so email, uh, it's it's goals. Like if you can get these email addresses and better yet, cell phone and better yet is both, right? You can actually directly get out to them. So lead magnets are one way to build that. So lead magnets can look like um, uh, <clears throat> 10 strategies to build a better business or um, get my lead. I'm trying to think of something. Uh, who's a business here that wants to just, we can pick on you for a second. Well, not pick on you. We're inviting you to have brilliance. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have a. Um, yeah. Wendy, you can pick on me. We're going to pick on you. Okay. So Wendy, what is your, uh, what is your business? Um, behind the lens photography. And so just give us kind of a 30 second blurb on what you do. Um, I create beauty with just using my cell phone, turn them into greeting cards that can be sent out to make canvas prints. Um, I do portrait work as well, but it's all done with my cell phone. So this is a pretty cool business. And if you haven't been to Essentia, she's got her stuff all over. Like it's absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So if she wants to build her email newsletter, let's call friends. And by the way, Zoom, you please feel free to put some comments in here also. Um, what might be something that she could offer free that you would be willing to give your email to her for as a lead magnet? So something that she would offer free that you would give her your email address in exchange to get. Tips on how to take better pictures with your cell phone. Oh, great! Nine tips on how to nine <laughs> tips on how to take better cell better pictures with your cell phone. Uh, Which, Josh online says elevate consulting fractional CMO download our free content creation guide for small business. So okay, that's but maybe a download a, a content some content which yes. is exactly what you said. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Josh. Um, so that would be a great. How many people uh, by show of hand and feel free on Zoom to raise your hand too would exchange your email for how to be able to use your cell phone better, take better pictures. Yep. Okay, just so everybody on Zoom knows, almost everybody in the room yeah. raise their hand. Thank Even you. if she got 25% of this room to do that, would that be successful? Absolutely. If you could get that many emails, mm -hmm. because that email list is what you ultimately want to be able to and market to, right? Mm -hmm. So is everybody getting the concept of lead magnet? If any ideas are coming to you of what a good lead magnet could look like for you, please jot it down because these lead magnet things like you, you see these things, right? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, yeah. like get my seven strategies for yeah. da, 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 <laughs> right? But make it unique. Like don't make it like what everybody else is doing. Something that's going to really catch people's attention. They're going to be willing to give that to you. Um, you can also do it, do some things with cell phones. So what might be some ways that she could use uh, getting a cell phone number. What would you be willing to give her your cell phone number to get something directly into your phone? A, a picture that I could use for my screen photo on my cell phone. Okay. She's taking all these great photos. That's mm -hmm. what I would want on my phone. Yeah. Excellent. So maybe it's a monthly photo that comes right to your cell phone. If you want a monthly photo specifically taken by Wendy with her brilliance, I hear send text the word photo to blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then here you get this beautiful monthly photo. Raise your hand if that would be something that you would love to see if you enjoyed the work that she does, her photos. How many people, if you, you have to see your work to know uh, seriously how amazing it is, right? Um, but think of somebody whose artwork you enjoy. If you knew you could get something to put on your phone, would you do it? Yeah, right? 
So great. Does that is that useful for you, Wendy? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all the call in of friends. <laughs> I can't. Okay. Um, so we get the gist here, right? You can get it right in. Um, so that's how you get email addresses, and that's how you can start working on cell phones. You should, anytime you're checking people out of Square systems, some people run their stuff right through Square or different types of POS systems, that's fine too. Um, but what you want to just be thinking about is how do I integrate that into a social strategy? So what kind of a post would that look like that I would want to make sure that I'm using for that? Um, and then of course, there's the special events. It is the social media strategy or the goal for this specific thing around a special event. And by the way, you can get really creative on special events. I mean, there's the normal, the anniversaries, the birthdays, whatever, but maybe so-and-so has worked at your organization for X, Y, Z years. Um, maybe you have, uh, some people now bring dogs to work. They'll have like the therapy dogs at work. Um, you know, Fufu joined us on XYZ date and it's national doggy day. So make sure you come and say hi to Fufu, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Right. You guys get the gist of it. Um, so I really invite you to be thinking about what is the goal as you put together these strategies. So there's sort of the bigger out there goal, but there's also the little goals that are going into these social strategies. Okay. Any questions so far? Is everybody with me? Okay, fantastic. All right, let's go to the next slide. Okay. Um, sorry, it takes a hot minute here. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about, you can go to the next one, okay. is why the target audience is so important. So if you have a, whoops, can you go back? Yeah, um, thanks. Sorry. That's okay. Um, so if we want to talk about the target audience, if I am selling... Let's think of an example here. Of, what's another business in here that like does somebody does somebody do retail in here? Okay, what kind of retail do you do? Flowers, plants, gifts. Flowers, plants, and gifts. Okay, excellent. Um, I'm just recognizing guests. I know you. Okay, it just it took me a minute. Okay, um, it's different in person, isn't it, than on Zoom? Uh, okay, so flowers, plants, and gifts. Okay, so are my things that I'm creating um, going to be targeted towards little kids? No. Who tends to be your audience? Who buys? I would say mid 20s to up mm -hmm. adults. So maybe in your case, it might be useful to actually brainstorm what the reason people might be coming in is. Okay. So if you were to category, categorize the key reasons, what would they be? Um just because flowers, um, sympathy, birthdays, weddings, um, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So funerals, yeah. weddings, birthdays, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, and yeah. then of course there's the just because. So if you are looking at building a strategy around those things, so when you think about the goal, the goal around how you put out the Mother's Day might be different because who's the audience for Mother's Day? Is it the moms? No. No. Who is it? Usually the kids or the husband mm -hmm. <laughs> or both. <laughs> and most of the time it's the last minute because they sort of forgot they were supposed to do that, right? <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean any offense whatsoever. I just know what the demographic data looks like. That is actually a research-based uh, uh, fact that I put out there. So in Valentine's Day, who are you reaching? Men. Okay. Yeah. And I have a quick question in that. So would our just because flowers be our greatest point for marketing? Because the world has marketed Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, whatever. Hallmark has done a great job for us already. People are already thinking about that. But there's a much greater market so that you keep your business going on the daily throughout the rest of the year when it's not a holiday. Mm -hmm. So a, mar a, a focus on just because flowers would be a really great place to start, I would think. So I'm curious what everybody else thinks. I think we'll have an answer too, if you feel like. I think what she I said think, makes complete sense. Yeah. It makes sense. I was thinking I'm focused on your market that is. How can you reach more to that potential? You know, if you're already selling this on Valentine's, how can you reach more and tap more into that market? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, overpopulated time mm -hmm. frame. Mm -hmm. Let's get some. Oh, the ahead. one thing I think of when you say that is, um, doing like flower subscriptions. So, you know, if men buy 
the flowers. How about you subscribe? And every three months, you get to give your wife a bouquet or something mm -hmm. like that. That's a fun idea. That's a great creative idea. And hold that idea for, because I know it's it can be in the strategy, mm -hmm. right? Um, what are, what are we getting online here? Um, Josh is saying that don't you don't want to lose your market share against competitors yeah. during those big seasons. Mm -hmm. So. So Absolutely. what I got curious about is what if both are true? Mm -hmm. So as you, this is where the strategy comes in. Mm -hmm. So if the strategy, you know, already on your calendar, where those big pieces are and where you need to back up the marketing strategy, right? That your calendar, mm -hmm. I can sort of visualize it. What if that concept gets sprinkled around those things and it could, and we'll get to some content development here in a little bit. But what if in that sprinkling of bringing in that stuff, you actually may draw in other people into some of those other things, but the education on the why it matters, right? The messaging mm -hmm. can get sprinkled in throughout. Does that, so it can be yes and, mm -hmm. because revenue wise, mm -hmm. I haven't seen yours specifically, but as a general law in the floral industry, funerals, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day are like, those are your three biggies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's even more because a lot of people are making their own flowers for weddings now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that has shifted that trend immensely. Did I pretty much nail that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to make sure that I wasn't putting, I was seeing the data for the industry. So I just want to make sure I, I got that right. Um, so your tart, oh, sorry, did we get another comment? We did. I, there was somebody I missed and I didn't, I just didn't want, I wanted to acknowledge them. HR said he agrees that, that, um, those smaller special reasons are a great time to give flowers and gifts. Mm -hmm. So the weaving in and out can yeah. be really useful. And so um, <laughs> when you get to the calendar piece of things, you really want to be looking at how you integrate those pieces into it. Um, and also, wouldn't it be cool if there was a texting system that reminded guys X, Y, Z date before blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Funerals are different in that you just want to be front and center in their minds because then when someone does pass, who are they going to, or they're going to think of it right away. Mm -hmm. And one, like even thinking about things like um, the specialty type of things you can do for people or how creative you can be to honor someone at that time period. And I know people like to see those type of things because mm -hmm. then, because let's face it, when someone passes, your brain is going if there's too much to think about, right? The last thing we're thinking about is, you know, the flowers, right? Is that a time when it's more important to have that relationship with another, with the funeral home or with the church or with the- Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Those, those so that can be a piece, yes, absolutely. And even could be some potential collaboration or, or things in that. Um, okay, so target audience matters. And one of the things I hope you got from what we just did right here is it's not necessarily just an age thing. It's really about how they show up in the world, how they behave in the world. And so you might have somebody that is 50, that's completely the way that they line up behaviorally is like this person over here who's 30, right? And so we've got to be super careful about just honing in on just an age thing. That being said, there are certain professions that this might make sense, i.e., um, if I'm a, a doctor who specializes in women's health, I am probably going to be looking at my targeted social components for somebody in these age demographics. Female are going to be more towards pregnancy, having kids, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden it's, oh, there's that 50 to 60. Oh, let's talk about menopause, menopause. right? <laughs> okay. So you get where this goes. Like yeah. it, it changes as we go along, right? Um, if I am now, this is very interesting, actually, that in, in our, our region, um, hunting and fishing in some markets could potentially be more geared towards men, but not in our market. We have a lot of women who hunt and fish in our markets. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've got to be super careful how we handle some of those, um, those things too. Does this make sense? You want to know your audience. Yeah. Does we do a whole training just on target audience, but am I giving you enough to, to get the little noggin going around? what we're thinking about with these posts and that's okay. Excellent. I just want to make sure, cause I don't want to step over that without making sure we cover that. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So now we want to talk about what is the method. So go ahead to the next slide. So there's a lot of different methods that we can use um, for reaching out. Now, this is not 
this this does not include everything. I try to start just grabbing at least a few ideas to maybe get you thinking about some. Um, so interestingly enough, most people, when they think about social media, they, people say, well, Facebook. Okay, there's a lot more social media options out there besides Facebook, but they aren't necessarily the right social media depending on who your target market is. Mm -hmm. So Facebook is like, I'm 55. Facebook is still my gender, my mm -hmm. age category. And oh, they're still using it. And there's a handful of younger, you know, the younger. But here's one reason that you've still got to be on Facebook as a business. Because if you're working with people, you've got to have the business page, right? For one thing. And I'll even, like, I have one business owner who's just from, she's 30 years old. She's like, I don't want to be on Facebook. I said, well, guess what? That business that you're working with is on Facebook. And if you're doing a collaborative effort, you've got to be maximizing what it is that you're doing. The other thing is anymore, like with Facebook, Instagram, you can put something up on one and get it right to Instagram. So easy to do it back and forth now. It's just way, way easier. Um, so at the same time, if you're only going out to reach 20 year olds and there's no collaboration and there's no whatever, it, they're not going to be on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. They're not. It's more about their parents might be on Facebook, right? <laughs> so if whatever you're putting out there might be something they would buy for a holiday gift or a birthday gift or whatever, then we want to be thinking about, okay, that might be a reason for me as a business to be on Facebook, okay? Does this make sense to everybody? Um, LinkedIn, that's your business. to That's more the business to business kind of stuff, right? So depending on what type of a business you have, it is a good way to make collaborations, especially if you have if your product would potentially appeal outside of just this market, right? Because you can connect with people out in the LinkedIn world. Does anybody here like ship stuff to other places or do? Okay, and online, we can ask the question online. There may be some folks online that have more of that um, because if you do, especially if you're reaching out, but it's not just that, you can use LinkedIn to connect with other people who have floral stores. You can connect to your like industries, you can get some great information on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is, is really has some great stuff. Um, and it's, they're trying to cut down on the amount of spam on that too. YouTube is excellent for anybody that does any type of videos or anything where you want to capture um, content that you might have that you do in like a video format, or um, some people add music to some of their stuff. But YouTube done well can actually be extremely successful. Um, there are clients that I have not worked with, but they have basically started, they built up, built up a, the YouTube channel, the followers on YouTube, the whole thing. They're like multimillionaires now. Now I'm not saying we're all going to get to that point. I'm just saying it can be a super effective tool. The other thing about YouTube that's really nice is linking. If you put some content into link YouTube, it's almost easier to, uh, link it to some of your other places. I'm, I'm not saying that very well. It's a little more sophisticated thing, but um, does anybody here use YouTube? Okay. I do. Uh, yeah, I, like I use it for some of my stuff. Um, so YouTube, especially if you're a musician, any kind of speaker, um, any kind of uh, podcasting, any of those genres, you definitely want to be looking at YouTube. And we could do a whole training just on YouTube. Um, TikTok. Anybody here using TikTok? People have a lot of opinions about TikTok. Okay. I did, but I got rid of it, but I loved it. What did you love about it? Um, it was very easy to navigate. Um, it, they had so many options of putting music or doing all the, it just was very, it was very user-friendly. Mm -hmm. And we, we had a couple of our student interns. <laughs> I haven't been, I haven't been comfortable on TikTok, but some of our past student interns have mm -hmm. set up an account for us. We had so many views. It really expanded our audience by hundreds, not yeah. not just you know on social media. On Facebook, yeah. it tends to be five or six responses. Mm -hmm. It was hundreds of responses on TikTok. So yeah. it was impressive. So yeah. I don't are you able to share why you got off it or is it a personal because of all the stuff talking about, you know, Chinese and information and and that it wasn't a safe place to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested to find out um what is real news, what's fake news, okay. what, okay. Exactly. And I'm just going to put that in the space. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, I'm curious to see if TikTok is going to be at stays with us thing, or if there's going to be something else that tries to come out and, and basically take the, take the place or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, 
it's fascinating because that has been the number one reason people have stopped using it. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is that information even valid of why people are stopping using it? Do you mm -hmm. understand what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Like people are stopping using it for this reason, but do we know for sure that this is valid? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and I don't have that, nor do I have the authority to even make that statement. Yeah. But I find it fascinating that that has been the number one reason people have left it. Um, X used to be Twitter. Yeah. Um, Twitter really is for only very specific kind of businesses that need to put certain things out there fast, um, that they have a lot of people following their comments or opinions on things, or I would vote that probably for the majority of who's on this call, I, I don't know that it's a thing. Um, does anybody use it? Okay. A lot of people got out that one a little bit ago too. Snapchat. That's always an interesting one. Um, so our younger populations use Snapchat, don't they? So how might how might a business or why might a business want to engage in some way, shape, or form with Snapchat? Is it more personal? Is it? Do you send it specifically to somebody? Is so Snapchat is like I take a picture and I snap you, and then you snap me back, and then it's like we get these little what do they yeah. call sequence going back and forth, or mm -hmm. there's a word yeah. specifically for it. Um, so yeah, 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 streaks. Thank you. Um, see, this is like clearly I, my kids have it. Um, <laughs> right. But I, uh, but if I were doing something related to prom. And um, maybe they're picking out their uh, little, you know, the corsages or this or that. Um, and they're, so this may not even necessarily be that you're on it, but one of them takes a picture of their corsage, snaps it to another, okay, you see what I'm saying? So it might be an invitation that they, hey, we invite you to take a snap while you're here. Mm -hmm. Okay, does this make sense? Um, so that is a way you can have those audiences using Snapchat is you're basically they're engaging with each other. I see this a lot with makeup with the young ladies is they'll be doing that or, or the guys at the gym. Like they get their little, I, I took my pre-workout and I'm ready to go. And da, 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 da. Okay. Right. And, and they do these snaps. Like here's my, here's my snap with my pre-workout. Okay. Here's me flexing. Okay. Here's me. Like you'll see these. I only know this because my son works out in the gym and they get these little streak things going. <laughs> um, do we have any comments? I looked the at only them. one was from TikTok. Uh, there's a somebody here who has um, hotels. I'm getting my cursor's not working correctly. She has hotels and she used TikTok, TikTok accounts for that. And um, restaurant opening, they've used uh, Snapchat. You can set up locations that populate in filters. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that would that's great. Thank you for putting that into the space. Mm -hmm. Um so do you guys see how this this stuff can work? Like you want to be looking at different things. Again, depending on who your audience is, it's different ways to um, get into this stuff. Here's what I will also say. Do not go on seven platforms at one time, right. okay? <laughs> get on something you can learn and learn how to use it and do it well. Mm -hmm. Then you can look at, okay, do we need to do this? Mm -hmm. The other thing I uh, will talk to a lot of business owners about, if you're not as comfortable doing this stuff, you have a couple options. One is you find somebody who is and you hire them. A lot of people have uh, people on their staff who might be a little more familiar with this kind of tech. Mm -hmm. And so they might um, actually add it into you know, other duties. Um, the other thing is, like, we have a lot of business owners, they'll just have their kids do it because the kids are learning this stuff right. so rapidly, right? Um, I, I joke about this, but it's not really a joke. When I was in high school, I think when I was a junior in high school, we got the very, very first and one in the whole school. The old, do you remember the old computers, the big honker that <laughs> took up the whole table? Yes. That was, I was a junior in high school. So we didn't yeah. grow up with yeah. all this tech, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're, it just takes, you know, we just have to keep learning. And so I say, break it up into little chunks so you can learn it and then it will be way, way better. Um, okay. So does that give you some ideas of some of those type of methodologies to get it out there? Okay. Um, e-newsletters, we kind of hit on that a little bit. Those are like those e-blasts that you get out. Do not underestimate the power of that. Um, now they'll say even like if you get a 12 to 14 percent open rate, that's actually considered pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then a click point, um, that's where they click on one of your links between two and three percent is good. 
Um, I felt really good about that. My, uh, I get a 30% open rate and a five to 6% click rate. So what that tells me is the content I'm providing is meeting my audience. If you are not getting the opens, you want to be looking at is the content I'm putting out meeting the needs of my, my, my audience. So you can be putting up if there's a special or coming up for this or join our VIP club. Um, it can just be an informational thing on why is it we love flowers so much? It, it, you you mm -hmm. get, get curious, you know, you can, there's so many things you can do. Um, texting, this is where you go right to the phones. Um, we talked a little bit about that. Blogs, I am a huge fan. If you've got something to save the world, get it out. Blogs are great because um, you can also put it up on your websites. It's something you can link out in the e-news. You can send it as an e-newsletter. Um, but like blogs, you have more content to work with to continue creating other things. Every blog probably has at least 25 different separate posts you can probably put out and just reframe it, re you know, whatever, mm -hmm. make a video. I mean, there's so much you can do with it. Um, like I could see you doing a cool, almost like with your photos, like actually being like a photo blog kind of a concept would okay. be so cool. Um, websites, um, the majority of us need to at least have some form of a website, even if it's just a landing page concept, Facebook okay. has created something that makes that super easy. Um, but web pages don't need to be complicated if your business isn't that complicated. But what happens is it's sort of a credibility thing. People will start to find you, then they'll be like, oh, do they have a website? And then they'll go to the website to look. Even some of the younger generations that tend to use their phone for like, they don't like, like what are the yellow pages? That, that's not <laughs> even in the realm. What I know though, is that they will still go to websites to check something out if they're looking at, mm -hmm. you know, scheduling a tattoo or making a beauty appointment. They will go to the website, especially because a lot of those places have scheduling systems right in them. Is this making sense? Um, okay, this stuff, because it's, uh, it's kind of social, but not as much in the realm of what we were doing. Radio, newspaper, billboards, posters, storefront windows, leave behinds any of the things, right? Just make sure that you've had the conversation in terms of how you, it's fitting into the social strategy. I like to think, I used to like to think about things in, in threes. I don't know that I totally subscribe to that anymore because we have so many platforms out there now, but it used to be, if you're going to put up a social media post, make sure you've supported that with newspaper and radio. Mm -hmm. We don't use newspaper and radio the same now as we did in the past. And so I think it's more about if I've got a blog content going out on a topic, let me make sure I've got a video post and a regular post that are also going to get the messaging out there, right? Because think about how fast you is everybody going to flip on your phone? We flip through, through pretty fast, don't we? So it's one thing is we got to make sure we're catching people's attention. Um, mm -hmm. And by the way, this is why the consistency, which we'll get to um, coming up here. And then car wraps and other complimentary pieces. So I'm a huge fan of if you have the right type of car wrap and the right type of vehicle. Um, if you are a hunting and fishing uh, business and you do like guided fishing services, you can picture a wrap on a truck. But if you all of a sudden show up in your little Volkswagen bug, <laughs> it just doesn't land somehow, right? <laughs> right? Um, so I always tell people, if you're going to wrap, okay, there's that, there's that. And also, it's probably not a good idea to go to the bar and have to get, you know, get a little out of control. And then you jump into your car that's wrapped like you were walking target uh -huh. for one thing right but it's just not a good look you know so you just want to be if you're going to choose to wrap the vehicle just make sure you do it um appropriately and that it matches right the brand matches what you're doing i have a okay. question on that method um oops sorry that's okay i'm i'm having a i can't see my cursor and i can see that somebody's commented out here but i can't get down to it so um, ahead with yours. the Radio, newspaper, billboards, like what percentage, you know, five, 10 years ago, it was at like 20% of marketing, 30%. And now today, what do you think it would be? And going forward, so that I, kind of a thing. I think asked? it completely depends on the type of business you have. Mm -hmm. So it's almost a hard question to answer without specifically going into a specific industry. Mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is there are people in the past that maybe used to buy billboards, but they don't tend to buy them as much anymore. But places that have like um, destination places, destination shops, or it might be in general, like a, a like you'll see car dealerships are still doing billboards and they're doing those huge newspaper, come and see us under the tent because we've got a deal for you, right? Um, there's still a place for certain industries. 
but I think where some industries maybe used to buy billboards, it's not as much a thing anymore. But I, what's interesting about, here's what I see in the shift in billboards, not that this was exactly the question, it's becoming more of a place for, let's call it social marketing. So you're seeing a lot of billboards being used for positive messaging, be kinder in the world. So have you, has anybody else mm -hmm. noticed this? Yeah. This, is a, this is a trend. So right now what's happening is some of those things are starting, the, especially in the billboard world, are, are being used for, I, I call it social marketing, like social cause marketing. Um, and I think we're going to see a lot of that. But you're still going to see the, I mean, like uh, the attorneys are still buying the billboards yeah. and the, okay, right, like you, did you get injured? An accident. <laughs> We're here for you, you know, as you're driving in your car. If you have injured, okay. Anyways, but what they're what they're hoping for is that if that happens, you're going to remember. Oh, I saw that billboard, mm -hmm. right? Because they're and there's usually not just one. You'll see them in multiple. They they are very strategic about how they place those. Does that mean? Does that? Mm -hmm. it, so per, I'm not even going to gander a percentage because depending on what the industry is, that's going to shift. Mm -hmm. So in some industries, it's probably still close to X, Y, Z. What has also shifted is people's marketing budgets, right? Because the more they're doing on social media, that's not something they have to pay for as much, right? It's time. It's somebody doing it, but it's not this, okay, let me write out the billboard check. Mm -hmm. So does that help? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, you don't have to tell me what industry you're in if you don't want to share it, but it's, are, it, did your industry use to do billboard? No. Okay. We've never done billboard. Okay. I don't think. Okay. So it's more, was this more like a curiosity question? Yeah. I'm just kind of curious. I mean, we still do a lot of radio, um, you know, the local newspaper, that kind of things. And yeah, I think it's effective for some of the um, clientele, yep. but I'm just trying to think of, is it going to continue that way? Well, and, you know, I always have to be careful about this stuff. I mean, um, because, you know, we like all our friends at the radio and the newspaper, the mm -hmm. body, right? I mean, we have to be a little yeah. careful. And also, I think we need to get um, some of the things that radio and newspaper have tried to do to combat some of, I think, where people are going is have very specific things like the home sport and travel show. So if I'm a business that would cater to that, that may be something I want to think about doing. Um, radio shows, if it's a very specific market that that radio show is reaching, then um, that might be something as a business I would potentially want to align. With. It's more, I call it more of an alignment. It's like public TV and public radio. People are doing public TV and public, public radio because of the show alignment and the clientele alignment, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. A lot of people say that newspaper is a dying business, that nobody looks at it anymore. It's all online. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Is it worth it to put an ad in on the in the paper? I would vote that it may depend on who your audience is and who you're trying to reach. If I'm trying to reach a 20 year old, I'm probably not going to be doing that, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that there is a generation that still loves to get their newspaper and read it. So if I am somebody who focuses on Medicare, and if I'm someone who focuses in on making sure you have your regular doctor's appointments and assisted living facilities and those kind of things, I think there's a place for newspaper. Mm -hmm. And also, I still think there's a business community that does do some, you know, mm -hmm. supporting. You know, I love the newspaper. I love personally just there's something about it's like reading a book I will do the audible but I way prefer to be sitting there opening the book I love bookstores I love the smell of the bookstores right but not everybody is that right we have generations of people that are that not isn't necessarily how it is right so does that make sense mm -hmm. and oh yeah go ahead we've got sorry. another question Kelly is asking about your thoughts about sponsoring a podcast and or having a podcast ad so it's kind of similar um, to so not actually, questions. Kelly, can you very, can, uh, just make sure you're not talking about actually doing the podcast? Correct. Okay. Um, I think it depends on if the alignment is there for you and you think that podcast is drawing in enough audience to justify what they're wanting from you. Mm -hmm. So uh I'll use my I, I just kind of need it just because I it's just the hot off my brain right now I did a nationally syndicated radio show for four years so they sold ads around the show the businesses that sponsored that 
would be would have been aligned with what the show's topic was, my age demographic of who I tend to reach, right? And the so the show it was the, it was sold out for four years. Um, so if there's a podcast that ties to what it is that you would be doing and the pricing is appropriate, that's and and I was like, is it a five day podcast? Is it a once a week podcast? Um, you have to look at does their audience align with you? What are they charging? What kind of return on investment can you see? Or are you just simply looking for awareness for something also? Does this make, make sense mm -hmm. to everybody? By the way, I'm a huge fan of doing your own podcast. If you have something that you could do a podcast about, you could do a really cool thing on the floral. Okay, what did she say? She said, make sense. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Kelly. Um, Bailey has a question. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have, does anyone have any texting systems that they would recommend? I use Project, Project Broadcast. Broadcast. Use Project yeah. Broadcast. Yeah. Um, the reason I do Project Broadcast, it's easy to use. You get a real phone number, mm -hmm. not the weird five digit that a lot of these texting systems do. And also it's super inexpensive. It's very affordable. And if you want a referral code, talk to Wendy, because I would <laughs> not be allowed to do that in a the setting. Um, but I do, I, okay. I just want to say this. I know sometimes I speak from my own experience of having a business, but what I want you to know is that it's sort of like, it's hard for me to not, because I do a lot of my own research, uh, both as a marketing consultant, but also as a business owner, I'm not going to put something out here that I haven't either had a client have experience with or I myself, because Money's tight for entrepreneurs a lot of the time. You really have to make wise choices. So that's why I'm saying, but I would never, um, I hope it's not coming off as anything for a personal anything. I just want to just val validate that. Sorry. I don't know why I just had to no, say that. Um, anyway, okay. Um, there's something else I want to say. And then I got segued on that thing about the pod. It was something about the podcast. No, it was something about the podcast. Um, by the way, something else with the podcast, if you're going to sponsor a podcast, I know it was, if you're going to sponsor a podcast, see if you can actually, I call it the package. So like, don't just have your spot run around the podcast. When they're doing the promotional materials, you want to be co-branded, right? This podcast is also sponsored by, mm -hmm. okay, you've seen that kind of stuff. You can even do things where they'll put your logo on their little uh, podcast thing or on a banner that they'll often have with the podcast stuff. So I always like to say, don't just necessarily settle for your 10 second message that is gonna be mentioned on the podcast. Actually look for what are the other options? Like how else could we actually co-brand this thing? Do you think QR codes are useful? Yes. Huge. When we, Huge. Yes, when it's a pro, again, some of these things are, it depends on what your business is. Did restaurants, during COVID help us in that they train people how to use a QR code. Absolutely. We had to learn how to use a QR code. By the way, this is how it is so often with tech. Up until we're forced to do it, we don't do it. <laughs> and then when we're forced to do it, we're gonna do it. And so that's the thing with QR codes. Um, the thing you got it. okay, so with QR codes, so like if you got some flyer out to whatever and you got a QR code, it makes it so easy now because people know how to use them. Mm -hmm. So I think when it's appropriate or at the right, you know, depending on what you're doing, um, even people who do these like booths at these uh, craft shows and stuff, if they don't have something right there, but that you can link them to your website, just scan my QR code, you go right to my site, it'll ship right to your home. Mm -hmm. So that's another way you can use a QR code. And for payment at those events too. And for payment. Code for Venmo or for right. PayPal. Yeah. It's really so easy. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. I think Lynn, we better go to the next. I don't know. I can't see what the time it is. Um, and he's not going for that. It's 1253. That means we have seven minutes left. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. I'm so sorry. Well, does I'm anybody it. is anybody voting? We could have done a half day on this topic. Yeah, like not, that's not, why we were doing yes. an hour. Is like how can they ever get? There's just too many things to talk about with this topic. Um. Okay. Scheduling time. We all have 24 hours in a day. You all have 24 hours in a day. So how you choose to schedule not just your personal but your business social calendar matters. So what you want to do is you really want to get very clear about what that schedule is going to look like. And I sometimes like to invite people to like take a step back as if 
you are a customer looking at this. So does time of day matter? Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. And you'll be able to see that in your analytics and different. Mm -hmm. Everybody says, well, what's the best time? It's different for every business, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and you'll be able to see in your analytics. So sometimes you have to play with the, some of this mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you go to the next slide. And so what I tell people is you've got to figure out how to maximize your time in getting the job done to get this marketing piece together with the social strategy. There are marketing content, content calendars <laughs> online. The reason I did not make a copy for you is because you can seriously go, there are like 50 different versions on there. I wasn't going to pick the one that's going to work for you because everybody's brain works differently. So some of these code them by uh, your type, like by email and blog and this and that. Some of them code them by time of day. You need to go find the one that's going to work for you. But what I invite you to do when you do this is make sure that you are looking at what is the goal and who is my audience for the goal? And then how, what is the method that I'm going to reach them with? And then you build that into this content calendar. Does this make sense to everybody? Okay. I color code my stuff. So like my awareness posts are get one color. My engagement posts get another color. So as I look at that marketing content calendar, I kind of have a feel of how things are going to be weaving in and out. This making sense. Okay, so one piece of to do after this um, is go just do a Google marketing content calendars. And I just want you to look and go like, okay, which one of these would work for me? And then you can pick the one that's going to work for me because that's what you're going to use to actually build in how to schedule this stuff. Okay, makes sense. All right, um, let's go to the next slide. Um, and then the thing about consistency. Consistency is key. Um, I referred earlier to like the EKG machine thing. Um, so the EKG machine is like, you'll see people, oh, here's all their content. And then, oh, <laughs> there they go again. <laughs> and when they're consistent, it's like, okay, that should be how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things is I just really, really cannot stress this enough. Even if you're going to do one post a week, do one post a week. Don't all of a sudden do seven posts in one week and then nothing for the next two months. Okay. So this is why that mapping out is so important. What are my goals? Who do I want to be reaching? What are the kind of posts I want to be doing? And then how can I actually map that into that marketing content calendar? Does this make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Um, all right, go ahead and the next slide. Next slide. I'll go backwards. Um, I don't know I the other. It just, yeah, it's just another place. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what happened. That's okay. Um, okay. So I'm gonna kind of wind it up just so we can finish on time. I hope, I hope to get back to their businesses. Um, so we talked about the goal and our key theme. We talked about our audience. We talked about the method, the scheduling, and staying consistent. Um, I'm gonna stop it here so we can get any last minute questions answered. Um. Does this make sense and how to use this to build the social? Totally. Yeah, okay, everybody. Yeah. Are there any looming questions or things that you feel like? I mean, I realize we could have gone on for three hours, but mm -hmm. do, is this useful? Okay. Um, so what I want, I'm just going to invite you to do is based on this thing today, I would love for you to write down three things that you're gonna do within the next 24 hours to start moving your social strategy forward. Mm. Three things in the next 24 hours. Also, I just wanna do a check-in with our online folks too. Yeah. Very, very, very useful. Okay, good, thank sense. you. Yeah. Thanks for the feedback online. A couple of people um, had to leave early. Okay. One of them was Rebecca. She's looking forward to meeting you. Too. Oh, awesome, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> yeah. But everybody's been excited about the content so far. Okay, super. Um, mm -hmm. So the other thing um, I just want to let everybody know, as Amy mentioned, um, I am one of the consultants with the Small Business Development Center. If you are not a client of the SBDC, I really encourage you to sign up. Um, I could be one of the people that you work with. We do also have a team of amazing people. We all have different uh, skill sets, different things that we bring to the table. And if maybe you worked with one in the past and you want to revisit a conversation, um, we can certainly do that also. Mm -hmm. um, I primarily do the stuff on Zoom just because I am based out of Bemidji. Um, but, so, but when I'm like, 
I've been here for a couple of days, like I've been here for a couple of days. So then I'll just, you know, set a, a lot of appointments in as well. Um, so yeah, I would highly encourage you to, to sign up for the SBDC because our services are provided at no cost to you. So we can help with the business strategies, the marketing strategies, there's just so many great things. And we love to partner um, with Barnesville as well because we work with the economic development. We've spent time on Zoom together, helping clients together. It's been awesome. Um, and the other thing is we have some evaluation that we would love for you to fill out. Um, that is um, partly what gets our little ticket punch to be able to come out and do these things for you. Um, we did have one more comment that uh, Michaela would love to uh, have another topic, another session on this topic. I said, we mm -hmm. should definitely do another mm -hmm. and um, sign up and work independently with, with um, Deb or one of our other consultants uh, on your business. So it's individualized. Yeah, what I would love for us to do when we do our next training thing mm -hmm. is um, uh, it's like a it kind of builds on this, but then we actually take marketing content and we actually like how do, can you build five posts out of this one piece of content? It's a really mm -hmm. great training, um, but I think that would be a fun one for us to do, yes. too. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. More to come. Um, but in the in the interim, we can be doing the one on one sessions also. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say thank you so much. Um, thanks again, Karen and Bailey, for having us. And um, Amy, for all the tech. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> no applause for you. Drop the plug. And um, yeah, go. we'd be great if you could do those evals. And uh, we'll kind of hang around and answer a couple questions. And just appreciate you being here. Thanks. And for you yeah. folks online, you should have received an email this morning from eCenter with a survey link. So please fill out that survey link. Um, I'll try and send it again. Um, and thank you to everyone for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Here, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm not sure if it ever yeah. recorded. Oh, no. Oh, it is recording. Oh.